Hey, welcome everyone to review of the JBL Tune 500 wired on the ear headphones. Now, if you want to see the written versions of you, you can find a link to my website in the video description. So as I mentioned earlier, a key thing to note is that these are exclusively wired headphones. They do not operate in a wireless mode whatsoever. With that said, let's continue on, assuming that you're still interested in these headphones. Here in Canada, they're priced at $45, whereas in the United States, they're priced at a very inexpensive $30 which makes this super budget friendly wired headphones, but there are a lot of trade-offs to it. Um, but of course that'll be explained throughout the rest of this video. So let's continue on with that information. Regarding connectivity, as I mentioned, these are only wired headphones. Um, you cannot take the cable out whatsoever. They're permanently attached into the headphones themselves. But when using the headphones themselves, uh, I noticed that if you tug on the cable or mess around with it, it doesn't distort or crackle the audio whatsoever. Not only that, the cable is advertised as having a tangle-free design, which I have to agree is true. Uh, I almost never got these cables tangled up, so JBL has done a fantastic job there. The cable length is about 46 inches long, and the end of the cable is a 3.5 millimeter adapter. For accessories, there's nothing included in the box. It's just the headphones with the wired attached to it, and that's it. But at this price point, it's not expected to have anything extra included in the box. The design of the body is simple enough to look at, although I have to say that the JBL logo is absurdly large. Thankfully, it's the same color as the rest of the headphones, so it kind of blends in with the rest of the body. It doesn't stand out too much. And the body does fold in, so if you want to collapse it in, make it a bit more smaller, footprint, maybe you're throwing it in your bag or whatever, you do have the option available. Now when it comes to comfort, this is the first negative key point here to keep in mind, is that they're not that comfortable. So wearing them for the first 30 minutes is not too bad. And after that point, it starts to get a little snug on my ears. They don't get hot, sweaty, or anything like that, but it does get a little irritated. Now, can I keep it on longer than 30 minutes, like an hour or two? Yes, I can do that straight, but it's not the most comfortable feeling. Um, that's probably due to one key factor is that the headband flex is a little on the tighter side. I think that's one out of two culprits involved. Now when testing them with glasses, um, the irritation kicked in just as long. It took about 30 minutes. Although the weird thing is that with glasses, the one key difference is, as I noticed my ears get a lot warmer. I don't know, it's because the glasses frame is pushing my ears out and the headband flex of the headphones are pushing in too snug. So, it kind of causes the ears to get warmer with glasses than without glasses. Now the ear cushions are thick and feel soft against my hand, but they are firm against my ear. And that's a general statement for anybody. You do almost everything with your hands, so they have a higher tolerance for pain and annoyances, whereas your ears don't. They're very sensitive. As I mentioned in the unboxing video, I was concerned about the quality of the ear cup material. It feels like it'll rip easily. Now, it is a bit more durable than I expected while I was conducting this review analysis, and I believe it can take a fair amount of abuse before it gets ripped easily. However, I've seen better material for my children's wireless headphones that are $5 Canadian cheaper and they're wireless, although the trade-off is that the Tune 500 sounds significantly better. That's still kind of inexcusable because it's one of the leading factors to making this uncomfortable to wear. Interior headband cushioning is minimal but still present. It's enough to get by and understandable that there isn't more material at this price point. Working out with these headphones is not recommended because even at rest, not working out, they're not the most comfortable. So when I'm exercising, I need full concentration because I'm usually doing progressive overload. With weight training, I don't recommend it because the cable will most likely get in your way. Um, when I'm weight training, I need to do full concentration. It might pass for some cardio exercises like biking, jogging, elliptical, because the cable is kind of dangling there. But again, if you're gonna be hot and sweaty and these aren't comfortable to wear without a working out condition, these are gonna make it even worse. Colors available for the body are blue, black, pink, and white. The body itself is very light, weighing at 148 grams. With that light weight, it's evident that they're, well, unfortunately not strong. For example, while under my stretch testing, I noticed that one headband connection kept coming out. I could easily pop it back in, but each time I stretched it, it came back out easily. And out of all the numerous headphones I've tested on my channel, these are the first ever to have this happen where during a stretch test, it actually caused some minor damage, and very easily at that. Regarding dust and water resistance, I highly doubt that's the case. It's not listed anywhere in the documentation, so best bet is to not get them wet or too dirty. If you're looking for official ear pad replacements for the Tune 500, they might be out of luck. So looking around the JBL website, the only place I could find it was on JBL for the United Kingdom. I couldn't find them from any third-party retailer. However, what I noticed is that because the JBL UK website 
says that they're compatible with the JBL uh, Tune 500 and 500BT. The safe bet is if you find the 500BT headphones from a third party retailer, they might be compatible with the Tune 500, but it's not a guarantee. It's just a chance you'll have to take. When you're adjusting the headband, it's done in notches. It's not a slider mechanism. And the ear cup rotation is excellent when going up, down, forward, and back. It's very easy to twist them and adjust them in those various angles. If you happen to be on the go and need to rest them on your neck, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, the ear cups are really small, so turning left and right is really easy. Looking down, it kind of hits against my chin, but not too much. It's uh, pretty much a pleasure to have them on my neck, very comfortable. Now, when it comes to controls, there's only a single button on the entire headphones. Actually, it's not even on the headphones. Technically, it's on the wire, just a few inches down from the headphones themselves. This single button has multiple functions. Pressing it once will either play or pause music, or answer or hang up a call. Double tapping will go to the next track, triple tapping will go to the previous track. Now, here's a weird thing. When using the control button with my Windows computer, it couldn't pause or play content. It just wouldn't work. For some reason, the button wouldn't do anything. Same case with going to next track or previous track. I was able to find an old Android device with a headphone jack, thankfully. And with that, it doesn't matter if I was controlling Spotify, YouTube, any media app basically, is able to play pause content, next track and all that good stuff just fine with this button. So the button I don't think is the culprit here. It's probably some sort of Windows driver thing even though I tested on multiple Windows computers, but the button works at least on Android devices for my testing. But there is a catch with my mobile testing. It's not all peachy keen. So it's compatible with iPhone, Siri, and Android and Google Assistant. Now I tested my situation with Google Assistant on Android. When I press and hold the button, it's supposed to activate the Smart Assistant after about two seconds of holding it down. Here's the thing, it worked once. So the first time I ever tried it, it brought up Google Assistant. It didn't accept the command, it just stopped and closed. And after that, it never worked again. So this button, I've tested it in multiple ways. I tried killing the Google Assistant app in the phone, what have you. It just doesn't work with Smart Assistant functionality that well. It's a big bummer. Now the next function shouldn't be expected, but I'm gonna mention it anyway. Passive play pause is not available. And that's something found in more expensive headphones where content is playing, you have the headphones on, cool. And when you take the headphones off, it'll automatically pause, put them back on, and then it'll automatically resume. So not expected as price point, but hey, I gotta mention it just for your knowledge. Now, when it comes to noise canceling, well, there's no active noise canceling, A and C. There's no transparency mode either, which basically, if it had microphones, it would allow sound to travel into the microphones and into my ear so I can hear my surrounding more easily. That's not available either. The only thing you can really do is passive noise canceling because they're on the ear headphones, they're literally on your ear. How does it cancel noise with that passive function? Not that great. Again, you shouldn't expect much as a price point. Um, it makes everything sound a bit more muffled. So if people are talking to each other or to you and they're within five or 10 feet having a normal conversation, their voice isn't as clear, obviously because there's something on your ears, but you can still hear what they're saying, have conversations with them. You can make do with these on a train, but you have to blast up the volume of whatever you're listening to, especially like a news or a podcast. This will not do well on a plane whatsoever because the plane noise is just too loud. On that note, another function that's not available but shouldn't be surprising, but I'm gonna mention anyway, is there's no side tone. Uh, side tone basically allows you to hear your surroundings and your own voice. How loud does everything sound for someone else on the other end when you're on a phone call? Uh, just wanted to mention that that function is not available. And because it doesn't support any type of extra functionality like noise canceling, it doesn't take any batteries whatsoever. Um, there's no battery life performance that like to discuss, everything is 100% powered by the auxiliary cable itself. Okay, so all audio that you hear right now is from the Tune 500 in a quiet environment. Get an idea of how it sounds, if it's clear or not. What I do is replicate a noisy environment with uh, a camera microphone, so you can hear how bad it is, and switch over to the Tune 500 microphone to see if it cancel out a lot of background noise. And finally, we're gonna do a replicated wind test. Okay, so I'm simulating a noisy environment with the camera microphone, doesn't sound so good. Switching over to the Tune 500 microphone, we'll see how my voice sounds with everything in the background. And I'll stop talking for a few seconds so you can take a listen to what it sounds like. Okay, so now I'm simulating a wind test by having a fan sit five feet in front of me, moving in various angles to see if we can capture any wind noise. Okay, so audio quality of the box is a lot better than expected. Although one little strange thing is that the box has major emphasis on bass boosting sound. That's not really the case here. You can really notice that there's a tiny portion of bass being pushed harder on the audio compared to everything else. 
That's only because I'm looking for it. I'm really listening for it. Base enthusiasts will be heavily disappointed that the box kind of advertises it in a bold way, but it doesn't really stand out here. Now that's a flat profile out of the box. Mids and highs sound a little bit on the duller side, but hey, it's a flat profile. It's inexpensive headphones. Let's give it a pass there. What really counts is how it performs with an equalizer. So in my testing, I had to use a third party equalizer. I'll explain why I had to use a third party shortly in the software section of this video. But using a third party equalizer, it wasn't what I expected either. Audio testing, I used various songs, but one in particular that's pretty popular back in the day was Poppin' My Collar by 36 Mafia featuring Project Pat. And here's the thing, in the equalizer, when I adjusted the bass up, what happened is that the bass got louder and it kind of made everything else kind of take a step back. So mids and highs and instrumentals and vocals took a step back slightly, bass got louder. And while bass got louder, it didn't get deeper. And that's very disappointing because you want the bass thumping to kind of kick in. I know that there's a very inexpensive price tag here. I have to respect that. I kept that in mind. But again, all it did is make the bass louder, but not deeper. So kind of disappointing because these are emphasizes bass boosting headphones. But the story is just as strange when increasing the mids. So the vocals got a little bit more emphasized with mids being increased, but it got too sharp in sound. And this happened for various songs, not just one. This wasn't a one-off. This happened with multiple songs. Is that the songs in general got too sharp. And it wasn't just the vocals that got too sharp. For some bizarre reason, a lot of the back instrumentals got too sharp for my ears and I had to just bring it back to a flat profile. Now on the flip side, when I increased the highs, it didn't get too sharp for my ears for some bizarre reason. It was actually enjoyable. It made the song a bit more fun to listen to. So overall audio performance on a flat profile or increasing the mids and lows is not gonna be what you expect out of the box, unfortunately. Okay, so sound quality when listening to these headphones with glasses, I notice no difference whatsoever. Um, everything sounds exactly the same as it did without glasses. And the main reason for this is because these are all the ear headphones the glasses, like the frame of them, don't get in the way whatsoever. And finally, regarding software, there's no software available. There's a JBL app, but these are not compatible with it. So when I was talking about using a third-party equalizer for my audio testing, it's because I had no choice. JBL doesn't offer a built-in app solution. Okay, some people might find that the final verdict score is a bit too harsh because they're inexpensive headphones. But you need to take some things into consideration. There are several major problems with these headphones, which you'll find in the con section. They'll be listed shortly. The cheaper headphones, the wireless ones I mentioned that my children use. And here's the thing. I would rather take headphones that are comfortable for a few hours straight and sound slightly worse or off in audio than the Tune 500, but at least you can wear them and enjoy the content you're watching or listening to. And that's pretty much a wrap. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help, subscribe, and thanks for watching.